All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so today, you know, I'm not really sure what direction I'm going, but I'm gonna start here uh, picking on this guy right here, Dispensational Times Bible Class. And I'm gonna show you something that I think is very interesting. And the what I hope to accomplish here is to be able to show you the simple truth as well as showing you that the deception in this world is greater than it's ever been that's the way it's uh, supposed to be and that's the signs that we're seeing so that we know that the end is very near okay and so to give you an idea what I'm talking about here in Matthew 24 Jesus is asked specifically what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and he talks the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many will come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and then we scroll down a little bit here we'll keep reading and it says except those days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. This is not talking about World War III. This is talking about the world being so overcome with lies and deception that there will be very few people, very few, saved. So much that if God let things play out longer, there would be nobody saved. There would be nobody born of God because of the deception not because of war but because of lies and we're seeing this right in front of our very eyes now obviously if you're one of those that believe the lie and you don't believe the truth you're not gonna see the truth just as we read in you know, really all throughout the Bible, but the one verse that I like to point to is in first or I'm sorry, second Corinthians three, verse fifteen, even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Why? Because they do not believe. Nevertheless, when the when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Right? We see a lot of examples of this uh, all throughout the Bible but um, it's very simple that if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ you're blind all right and this is an Old Testament and in the New Testament it's your eyes are not opened until you are born of the Spirit of God until you have faith in Jesus Christ all right. Now, having established that, all right. Um, uh, a couple of great comments here from last days two o two four. The whole world is a stage. Uh, the stage is set, right? And Christ was in the world when He took our nature upon Him and dwelt among us. The Son of the Highest was here in the lower in this lower world. He was in the world, but not of it. He came to save a lost world because it was a world of his own making, yet the world knew him not yet. And so also, you say that Jesus is not of this world, neither are we that are in Christ. We are not of this world. We are strangers in a strange land. And I'm here to tell you this land, this world is strange, very strange. Right, and then um, this uh, this got held for review because it's a link and this is the song posted three weeks ago and I am by no means a music expert uh, there's just 
one little bit of uh, criticism I'd like to offer here I know I'm, I pick on everything I take the fun out of everything I know right there September 4 about three weeks ago all right so um, I don't want to take the fun out of this but um, I mean the, the video just by looking at the video looks like a lot of fun happening I get it but um, in this video I notice it there's a there's they use a drum machine I, I don't know why I mean I, don't, I can't even prove that to me it sounds like he's using a drum machine the whole time and music is supposed to ebb and flow so you want highs you want lows you want fast and you want slow and now I'm not a musician so what do I know I mean I used to I used to be a musician I was terrible at it so I don't know nothing but uh, See, I like the lyrics and everything, and this would be a great chorus, in my opinion, if if you didn't have the constant rattle of the drum machine. And the reason I, you know, the re for me personally, the reason it bugs me is because I can't hear very well, and so when I hear that tink 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 tink, tink you know, that constant drum machine going off and I used to have a drum machine I might still have one so I know what it I know what it sounds like and I don't like it maybe I just because I got sick of hearing it but it takes away from the chorus which in the chorus is beautiful and if if there was no drum machine or if it was very very slow it, the chorus would stand out greater but what do I, I don't know nothing So good job. That's a good song. It just, um, doggone it. I'm too picky. I take the fun out of everything. But thanks for sharing that with me. It's very hard to find good music today. It's just, it's like very hard to find a good movie today. It's almost impossible. It's like all the good movies are old, and all the good music is old. Nobody can get it, can do it good today. I mean, seriously, that's how I feel. I don't think it has anything at all to do with um, being old myself right I, I don't think it has anything to do with that when I was a kid I used to think that I don't think that anymore and it I mean come on man they don't they do not write songs that are as melodic and they don't ebb and flow like they used to they don't have the heart and the soul that they used to. Okay, so anyways, let's continue. All right, so there's this gentleman here. <clears throat> um, and we're going to just listen to a little bit of what he says. And then I'm, <clears throat> I'm really going to pick on this guy. So, uh, yeah, put your seatbelt on. Roger Feenstra. Is that too loud? Come on, Roger, let's get to it. Come on. Well, Bush there. Good to be with you today for session 20 in the book of Revelation. It's amazing. We've been in this book for 20 weeks straight. 
and we have a few more to go after today. I think we're going to go to about 23, and we'll see how that goes in the, the upcoming weeks. But thank you to those who have hung in there with us. I know it's been a lot of information, and the book of Revelation, while it's not difficult as far as the layout of it and the, uh, the outline and so forth, there are so many things in the book of Revelation that really we just have to speculate about and that we don't... Yeah, see, I don't like that, Roger. Because uh, we ought to know exactly what the book of Revelation is saying. Uh, this idea, oh, we just don't know. It's just a lot of speculation and we don't know. And we just can't know. And it's unfortunate because, you know... Or dumb. Uh, in Revelation chapter 1, right, Revelation 1, that means that's the first chapter in the book of Revelation. Alright, so you got the first verse, you got the second verse, and then here in the third verse, it says, Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand in my very strong opinion that does not jive with Rogers theory that we can't understand we can't know what the book of Revelation is talking about why would we be blessed to read this if we could not, cannot understand it? It just doesn't jive with me at all. Now, <clears throat> what would jive with me is if Roger doesn't understand the book of Revelation. That would jive with me. And that would make sense for why he would say that. We don't really know, and so um, I am going to make an adjustment here real quick on my microphone. I think that's going to be a little bit, but uh, we, uh, we have the book of Revelation that is, again, not difficult insofar as the way it's laid out, but the speculating that we have to do for various things along the way. What, why? Why will we have to speculate? Everything in the book of Revelation is supported by the 65 books. You've got a great foundation already established and built that we can rely upon when we read the book of Revelation. It's the very last of 66 books. It's supported by 65 other books from Genesis to Revelation the way as we study through it I think uh, make it so that when people study the book of Revelation there are so many different varying viewpoints on it <laughs> wait a second when you study the book of Revelation you should be reading the book of Revelation and we see who bear record of the Word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw talking about John and so we can study you know however you want to do it really you just let the spirit whatever in my opinion, whatever sort of um, unsure, unsuredness, if you will, whatever you're not sure about, go. You can find it for sure. Find out exactly what it talks about in the Bible itself. So let's say, okay, so who bear record of the Word of God? What is the Word of God? I want to learn more about that. What's that mean? For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. 
I mean, that's how you study the word. That's how you study the Bible, right? Now, Rogers' view or idea of studying the Bible is, well, let's go to Revelation one. Now, I don't know what it says here. It says, uh, in the revelation of Jesus Christ with God, blah, 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 blah. Let's go, let's go find, uh, what's, uh, let's read some commentaries on what this means and blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, well, okay, well, well, nobody can know. No, that's not how you study. You, you don't look to man to learn what God says. It has to be established, whatever it is, it has to be established by the Word of God. It has to be. The Word of God is the authority. The Word of God is the final authority. Now we can listen to men and hear their ideas, but it has to be firmly implanted into the Word of God. It has to be. It doesn't come from the, the truth, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding comes from God. It does not come from man. All right, I'll give you an example here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the Word of God is the foundation of our faith. It is the foundation of what we hear. The Word of God is the foundation in which we base all Bible doctrine on. All right. Well, study the book of Revelation, there are so many different varying viewpoints on it. And of course, I have some varying viewpoints as well. And in the notes, which I've provided for you, of course, uh, you can take those notes and uh, let me get over here to another screen if I can. And I'm going to shut that down. Yeah, shut Let's this see. whole site down, buddy. I'm going to open up a screen. Uh, I shut it down because I heard music playing from another website. There we go. And uh, we'll bring this up here. And I will go over to it. There we go. There is uh, my website, rogerfeenstra.com. And you can go to that site for all kinds of goodies. Uh, one is, of course, to know more about Hope Now Cambodia. I love that picture. That is a picture from, that's a pre-COVID picture. And I've toyed with the idea of replacing it, but I like it so much because I really enjoyed that day where we had a little mini seminar with some really great guys. And uh, pre-COVID, kind of a neat memory to have that. But anyway, uh, the Revelation Bible class, right to, to, on the menu above, we'll click on that, and as you can see, there is the, uh, the site, and here are the notes. And notice at the top here, it says all notes and graphs and charts may be copied and shared freely. So you can, uh, a little bit larger, you can copy these, you can do whatever you want with them, they're free, I'm not... Uh, copywriting them. I'm not charging anybody. You can take the graphs and the charts and you can do whatever you want with those. Yeah, and, like throw them in the garbage where they belong, huh? And of course there's quite a few on here from the book of Revelation, but then there's another place you can go to uh, right here uh, where you can find pretty much all the charts and graphs that I put together and you can take those for whatever they're worth and you can and throw them in the garbage where they belong okay so let's get into what he has on his notes here the revelation of Jesus Christ revelation 17 1 through 18 all right so 
I, I don't understand. You know, we want to cut off some of it. No, it's is there a 19 or something? I don't get one through 18. Now I have to go and check and verify to make sure that you're not cutting off verse 19. I don't, you know, it's just a chapter. Oh, I'll make a big deal out of nothing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So in his notes, we're going to read the very top here where it says, The seven vials of God's wrath have just been poured out on the earth in his final judgment now one of the seven angels who had one of the seven vials <clears throat> excuse me came and talked with John it is unknown which angel but it is likely the seventh angel since his vial contained God's wrath concerning Babylon I, <laughs> There's no need to speculate on well, which one of the, one of the angels was it? That, that's fruitless. It's vanity. Has no relevance whatsoever. Whatever. In chapter sixteen, verse nineteen, we read. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, we read. God remembered Babylon, and would give that city the fierceness of His wrath. While those verses only tell us that Babylon came into God's remembrance. The result as we will see in chapter 18 is the destruction of that city but first in chapter 17 we get some details filled in for us no idea of what in the world he's talking about really what in the world let me I gotta while those verses only tell us that Babylon came into God's remembrance the result as we will see all right okay I don't know what the point of that. I mean, you would think that there would be some sort of point being made here. But first, in chapter 17, we get some details filled in for us. The angel talking with John refers to the judgment of the great whore. There is no watering down of this verse in the King James Bible. <clears throat> it uses the noun whore. This word has been softened in some translations. Is that right? Some translations have softened the great whore? Say it ain't so. All right, let's examine. Let's examine this. Let's examine this. Let's just see. Let's just see. Let's find out what some of the other Roman Catholic translations say. Oh, the great harlot, the great prostitute, the great harlot, parentheses, idolatrous. Okay. All right. Notorious prostitute. Ooh, the great prostitute, the great whore. The shameless prostitute. Great prostitute, great harlot, famous prostitute. Oh, she's famous. Great prostitute, great prostitute, great prostitute, great floating dot prostitute, parentheses, whore. A great whore, notorious prostitute, famous prostitute, notorious prostitute, famous prostitute, notorious prostitute, and um, great harlot, and the great whore. I'm just looking. Great prostitute, notorious prostitute, gone, uh, gone ho whoring. With the whore with whom the kings of the earth have gone whoring. The great whore who sits 
throned over many waters, the whore with whom the kings of the earth have gone a whoring. Great prostitute, prost notorious prostitute, great harlot, great prostitute. Now you might be wondering, as I used to wonder, why would they change that word? Now what's the big deal? Why is it such a big deal? Why do we gotta change that war that word? Oh Great Harlot. Look at that. The new King James Version says the Great Harlot. Wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on a second. The King James says the Great Whore. The new King James Version says the Great Harlot. Well, I thought the New King James Version was just a New King James Bible. Huh? Why would they change it if it, if all they do is change the these and thous? Why would they change it from Great Whore to Great Harlot? Do you ever wonder about that stuff? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because they don't care about the truth. It's not about take you know making it easier to read and taking out the these and nows. It's about corrupting the Word of God and abiding by copyright laws so that they can sell their Bible version and make a lot of money. Of course, the sole purpose of the New King James Version is to get people away from the, that King James Bible. And now, isn't it interesting that the NKJV follows so many of the other corrupt Vatican approved Bible versions oh huh don't you get suspicious of stuff like that I sure do oh powerful woman who sells the use of her body that's a new one that's creative Powerful woman, she's powerful. Uh, great prostitute, great whore, great whore, great whore, great whore, great whore, great whore, the great, oh, here we go, the Zona Hagadadua, the great prostitute, great whore, great harlot, great harlot, great prostitute, great whore. Great whore. What in God's name is this? Come and I will show you the woman who has given herself over to wrong ways of using sex. Alright, you know what? I mean, that guy's right. I mean, some of these, this one here, I mean, it, when you compare the great whore with wrong ways of using sex. Yeah, that's a little bit watered down, isn't it? It's a softened a little bit. And they could have went so far as to say the not exactly correct way of using sex. The woman who has given herself over to not exactly using sex in the right way, you know. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it doesn't. It looks like they're softening that. It's, as softy soft as they can get. Alright, okay. Great whore. Judgment of the great whore. Alright, so uh, that's a good point from Roger right there. They, now, th it should, in my <laughs> in my opinion, this should lead someone to think why. Well, I'm a, one of those dummies that always has to ask questions because I don't know nothing. And so, one of the first questions I would ask, and I've already asked, believe me would be why why would they change that why would they I mean for forget about softening it but why change it at all right and then okay the word has been softened in some translations at all it always goes even softer than prostitute doesn't it but the Greek word for whore See, this goes back to Genesis 
chapter 3 when we learn about the serpent being the most subtle creature that the Lord God has made right and he says to the woman yeah has God said great whore well if you go to the Greek that that's the serpent still active today you understand that right but the great I'm sorry the Greek word for whore is a strong word it is porn we get our English word pornographic or pornography from porn here it is used in the sense of a woman who sells her body for sexual use oh I didn't know that interesting God is about to judge the great whore that sits upon many waters honestly if you don't understand what great whore means in English I strongly advise you to learn English especially if English is your native tongue if you were born into the English language then learn the English language I'm telling you right now if I have to learn a foreign language I'm, I'm I can't do it I tried it I can't do it I can learn you know Buenos Dias of course, if I go a couple of weeks without saying Buenos Dias, I'll forget what Buenos Dias means. But if I wanted to have a conversation with somebody who spoke Spanish, forget about it. I, you know, the one there was one time when I said, "Hey, Buenos Dias, mi amigo, cómo estás," and he's like, "Blah blah blah blah," and I'm like, "What? No idea what he said." I shouldn't have said what I I shouldn't have said that in Spanish because he thought I spoke Spanish. I had no idea what he said. He probably said I'm doing pretty good. Thanks, man. No idea. I mean, I don't know Spanish, and th that guy talks too fast. I I think pretty much all the Spanish speakers they talk way too fast. If they would slow down and say Buenos Dias mis amigos then I might understand no they say I mean they don't even have pauses in their words can't under okay who cares all right who cares let's move on here here gonna go the Greek well what about the Chinese man what, what's it what's the Chinese word for great whore why go to the Greek well if I say in the the Greek word for great whore I might deceive you if I say the Chinese word for great whore is blah 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 then I'm probably not going to deceive you All right so the only way for me to trick you is to pretend like I'm going to a holy language like this magnificent sacred holy language it's got magic attached to it magic and if you understand magic, you understand there's power and magic. And then if you read the word in Greek, then you possess magic. And Really? I mean, what in the world are you people thinking? Seriously. Why? I don't speak Greek. You speak Greek? No, the guy writing this, he don't even speak Greek. You're basically admitting you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands when you make a statement like that. You don't believe in any Bible. You know, Greek's not a Bible, right? You know that. Uh, you could pretend to be as dumb as a stump. It don't change the fact that Greek is a language. It's not the Bible. All right. 
I get fired up about this stuff. Yeah, and you wonder, and people wonder why the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Nobody believes the Bible. All right, yeah, so when we're talking about porn, porn this, and porn that, and porn pornography, and porn, pornographic pornography, and porn, porn, porn. All right, so now where are we at? I forget what I was talking about here. God is about to judge the great whore. That sits, okay, I got you. Now I know where I'm at. Okay, so is this talking about an actual woman? What the heck is the matter with you? What do you mean is this talking about? You think this is talking about a woman? You even, to even ask that question? Why would you ask that question? What are you, an idiot? No, seriously. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. This is a great big fat woman. I mean, she's huge. She sits upon many. You think, you think this is an actual woman, with whom the kings of the earth have have committed fornication? So all the kings of the earth, the king, they had sex with this great big fat woman, and you're asking the question: Is this action a real woman? I, that's a, I mean, this is like being deliberately stupid. This is this isn't even childish. This is deliberately stupid. It's brain damage, is what it is. To even ask that question, why would you ask that question if you didn't have brain damage? I don't know. He in verse fifteen, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sits, are peoples multitudes nations and tongues so this great big fat woman is sitting on peoples multitudes and, and you think is this talking about an actual woman no oh, that's a great answer man I was I was a little concerned of course it's not talking about an actual woman man Yeah, they say there's no such thing as dumb questions. And that's true. There's only dumb people. And boy, oh boy, I thought I was dumb. My goodness, man. Way to go, Pastor Roger. We see the great whore in the context of the chapter symbolic of a deprived city. Specifically, Babylon. You can't get around that, can you there, Pastor Roger? Because this great whore is called Mystery Babylon the Great. Can't get around that fact, so good job, Roger. In the context of the divine city, blah, blah, blah. In the chapter, Babylon is called that great city. It's in verse 18, which is right before verse 19 Babylon is not just any city the great whore is a future Babylon eh, wrong you might as well just say I don't know what it is I got a Netflix movie to watch and I just don't know what it could be The great whore is a future Babylon. Okay, so when Jesus, if Jesus comes today, whether he comes tomorrow, a hundred years from now, five hundred years, thousand years, when Jesus comes and this future Babylon that you preach never comes, I, I want to be there when you're explaining to Jesus why he can't come back yet. I want you to explain to him this future Babylon that you have imagined it doesn't even begin to make any sense at all now I'm not saying Roger's a liar a deliberate liar but he has believed a, a lie and I know what lie that he's preaching I know the lie that he's believed and I know why 
this lie is preached because the liars that this is talking about they don't want you to know that this great whore is in power right now so they do everything in their power to confuse and deceive the people to get them to believe anything but the truth and people don't care about the truth so they eat it up and this idea of oh a future battle oh this is this is interesting huh this isn't so intriguing right so we watched a movie and in the future a hundred years from now there was this antichrist figure that came and he was very powerful and he did this and he did that and he killed a bunch of people and it was such an interesting movie problem is that that's not scriptural this idea of a future Babylon is not biblical at all this idea of a future Antichrist is not biblical at all in the sense to say that well there is no current Babylon there is no current Antichrist everything is jolly wally and uh, nothing to see here so just uh, ignore you know everything ignore the truth believe the lie all right, obey the government sit down and shut up the great whore is a future Babylon that will sit upon many waters explained in verse 17 or verse 15 whatever and is called that great city that reigns over the kings of the earth and over people's multitudes nations and tongue future Babylon will hold great sway over the nations of the earth hey, don't worry CBS and NBC and Fox News and CNN everybody's gonna be they're gonna be on television explaining this every single day so don't worry about it just keep watching television there are many interpretations concerning the identity of Babylon mentioned in chapter 17 the most popular interpretation is that it is Rome and the seat of the Pope some believe this cannot refer to literal Babylon since that city was destroyed long ago so it must be Rome huh I do not agree rather I believe this is literal Babylon All right, without reading anymore right there we have the trap well, it's not Rome it's not the anti Pope can't be the Pope can't be the Antichrist he's a good fella I was just watching CNN and he's doing all these wonderful things and kissing babies he's a sweet man well here's the problem Roger I'm gonna walk you through this all right now I, I don't I don't agree with this the most popular interpretation is that it is Rome and the seat of the Pope now if this said 1923 I would that was this would make sense because 1923 that was the most popular view in 2023 it's not the most popular view at all now my guess is that you are getting your information from other sermons and other preachers and this is the information that they have given you and you've been passing this on for the last hundred years this playbook that you're going by right I mean you even said it yourself you gotta study the when you study the book of Revelation you see that other men say this and other men say that well, that's not studying the Bible that's studying what other men are saying so that's what I think man that's what I think and it, it to me it's very clear that pre most 99 percent of all the preachers in the churches on Sunday download their sermon off the internet Now that number actually might be closer to 100% than it is 
that's that's what I that's what I think, man. That's what I think. If you go to a church that has a central office in an, another town or another state, even you got just think about that, man. What's going on? It's like a business. This ain't the Church of God. This is the Church of Omaha or whatever, you know. So this is a corporation, not a church. You know, think about that. All right, so I'm going to walk you through this here. Now, let's see. I don't want to miss nothing right there. I'm not going to, you know, once you say this here, you need to poop on the rest of everything that's being said. All right, so in Revelation 17, it's important to understand what the beast means all right so i get it man when i first uh, you know started reading the bible and stuff I, a little bit unsure of you know the beast you know and its meaning exactly right and then of course the great whore unsure of its meaning exactly and so on and so forth and it's very interesting because the bible tells us exactly what these things mean but uh so really you have to you have to read the Bible to understand these things. And so that's why it's so very important that you believe the Bible that you read. Right? Because when you read it the first time and you don't believe it, there's going to be that cloud. But when you read it the first time and you believe it, then this will come into remembrance later on. Alright, so let's define the beast and this is crucial ladies and gentlemen this is absolutely crucial to understand the simplicity of it in Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 he talks about four beasts until the end of the world and these four these great beasts which are four are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Now to understand this, it's very simple. The four kings, each king represents a kingdom. Alright, you forget about what well, his name was Tony Mazzaroli. And Tony died and that was it. No, that's that's that that's not how it works, man. The kingdom is still established, regardless of the name, the specific birth name of the king. All right, that's important to understand because God, this is so stupid, but it's, that is important to understand because if you think of it as one person, Tony Mazzaroli, or whatever name I made up. All right, Tony dies. Well, that's the first king, and then. Here comes along Stu, then Stu dies, it's, well that's two kings, and then here comes, um, you know, whoever, Joseph Smith, and then he dies, right? And then here comes um, Roger, Roger dies. That's four kings, now it's the end of the world. Well, this was written, you know, some say uh, 3,000 years ago, whatever. So that's not possible, right? It's not possible. This is talking about four kingdoms. And Daniel names the first three kingdoms. Right? The first kingdom is the Babylonian kingdom. The second kingdom is the Medes and the Persians. Alright, and the third kingdom is the Greek Empire or Grecia. Or however you say that word, right? So he mentions, he names the first three beasts of the four beasts until the end of the world. All right, there are going to be four kingdoms, and then the fifth kingdom the, is going to be an everlasting kingdom, right? That's going to last forever. All right, so the four kingdoms are represented by four beasts. That's important to understand the whole way through. 
And I feel like there are so many people, Roger included, Pastor Roger, the great Pastor Roger. He's got this website, and he's got notes and all this stuff. He puts all this time into it, and he still don't get it. Well, it's very simple. You don't need all the notes. You don't need to learn what other pastors are saying. You don't need to download sermons on the internet to know what this is saying. This is very simple stuff, man. Very simple stuff. Each beast represents a kingdom. So when we get into the book of Revelation and it talks about the beast, the great beast, or what have you, it's talking about this fourth beast. Because we know that the first three kingdoms are no longer in power and that the fourth beast of Daniel is in power now we know it hasn't ended because the world has not ended that fourth beast is very clear when we read the New Testament there really shouldn't be any doubt about it because it's so obvious it is so obvious it's an it's amazing there are lots of places we can go to but I like to go to the same place every single time it makes it easier for me to remember and uh, in my opinion it makes it easier for others to learn and we see in Luke chapter 2 verse 1 and it says it came to pass in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus do I need to do a big time search on who in the world is Caesar Augustus I mean you can if you want but uh, you don't even need to do this because there's so many other verses in the Bible that clearly indicate that Caesar Augustus is the Roman Empire, right? He's the Roman Emperor, if you will. Well, all right. So, look, you can figure it out on yourself, on your own. Okay. All right. So, to me, that's as crystal clear as it gets. The Roman Empire is the fourth beast of Daniel. Therefore, it has to be the beast of Revelation. Of course, you do an internet search and you see that, well, the Roman Empire collapsed in 300 AD or whatever it says, right? Whatever. Whatever historical view they want to present. I wasn't there, so I don't know. That's what they say. Okay? So, the physical empire collapsed. Well, okay, so if the Roman Empire is the fourth beast of Daniel... Now he mentions the Greek Empire as the third beast. We know the Greek Empire collapsed long, long time before the Roman Empire. After the Greek Empire came the Roman Empire. Now if you say that collapsed, if you say the Roman Empire collapsed, then you're saying that the end of the world already came. And I promise you, I'm not lying to you. The world has not ended. All right, it hasn't. It's gonna end, but it hasn't ended. All right. So now, it should be firmly, firmly established that we are in this fourth beast, this fourth kingdom, right now, and the beast of Revelation is that fourth beast of Daniel. Now it. It's talking about here in Revelation 17 of the great whore, which is also the beast. Or she, how is it described here? Let me read this here. All right. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine, the spirit, of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-collared beast 
full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So the whore sits on the beast. Think about that. So the whore, which is a religion, sits upon the beast, which is the kingdom. All right, you get it? It's pretty simple. It really is that simple. The religion, represented by the woman, specifically called the great whore, because she is not the bride of Christ, but she is a whore who pretends to be the wife. All right, this is not rocket science. This is actually, it's very simple. All right, so the whore being a religion sits upon this kingdom that has power over the whole earth keep that in mind to help better understand this let's go to verse 8 the beast remember the beast is the Roman Empire the beast that was so the Roman Empire was right there we go right there it was and is not there there we go oh wait what's that say when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is how do you explain that well think about it the Roman Empire that was and is not and yet is what could that possibly mean well man it's obvious isn't it the Roman Empire that was and is not and yet is can only be the Roman Catholic Church the great horror the what was that the woman that had stinky sex or whatever that verse was or no, that's not what it said is it it wasn't stinky sex it was using sex incorrectly or whatever in the wrong way The Roman Catholic Church is the great whore. Well, the most popular view is that it's Rome and the seat of the Pope. But I don't believe that. According to Roger, Roger's blind. Why would we listen to Roger? How about this? How about we believe the Bible and what it says? If we believe the Bible and what it says, we have to conclude that the Roman Empire is the fourth beast. I showed you in Luke chapter 2, verse 1, Caesar Augustus is the Roman Emperor. Therefore, and he had the power to decree that the whole world should be taxed. Now, the Bible don't lie. How in the world did he... I don't have the, the ability to do that. Do you have the ability to do that? Can you send out a decree that the whole world should be taxed? All the world should be taxed. I don't, I don't have that ability. Caesar Augustus had that ability. And the Word of God is true. This is absolutely true. Caesar Augustus went out, sent out a decree that all, all the world, all the world, not just well parts of, uh, you know, no, 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 all the world, 
all the world. All, all means all. all. All the world. All the world should be taxed. So he had the power to do that. And therefore, the Roman emperor represents the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire, therefore, has to be the fourth beast of Daniel. And therefore, has to be the beast of Revelation. And the beast that was and is not and yet is has to be the Roman Catholic Church and the church rides upon the beast and the whore sits upon many waters which is peoples multitudes nations and tongues. Now ask yourself, does this fit the Roman Catholic Church? Does the Roman Catholic Church exist among peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues uh, <laughs> yeah it does absolutely no question about it so when we read verse 8 the beast that was and is not and yet is that is the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. It went from a physical empire into a spiritual empire. You see, Jesus came along and he outdid Caesar by showing himself that he is God of not only earth but also God of heaven very powerful what Jesus Christ has done and because Jesus showed himself to be God of heaven and of earth the Roman Empire felt it to be necessary that they equal themselves with God and try to replace the power of God and use it as their own power. Now, I apologize if I don't explain that very well. But if we go to Daniel... See, there's only one way for me to remember this. I have to use key phrases, right? And so if we go to Daniel chapter 11, it talks about the fourth beast. And it says, uh, neither shall he regard the king, the, I'm sorry, <laughs> excuse me, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Wow. It's talking about the fourth beast. It's talking about the Roman Empire. No question about it. We go to uh, 1 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm way off. Gee whiz. In Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse four, it says, "Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." It's talking about the fourth beast of Daniel, the beast of Revelation. It's also referred to as the Antichrist. It's the same. 
thing. All right, same thing. All you have to do is connect the dots. And isn't it interesting here in Daniel, nor the desire of women. Hmm, what's that mean? Well, I've heard a lot of phony balonies try to pass this off. To me, it's very obvious. Very simple, very obvious. If you want to know the answer to that question, what's that mean? Then ask yourself this question. Have you ever heard of a Mrs. Pope? Think about it. The beast that was and is not, and yet is, is, can only be, the Roman Catholic Church. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. Now think about this. Now, all this is talking about, just so you know, so no, it's real simple. This, it's talking about a succession of kings. Notice every time there's a new pope that CNN and Fox News, they go nuts over this stuff, man. Oh, smoke's coming out of somebody's chimney. That means they've made a decision. Oh, that's a big deal. I mean, it's worldwide news, man. It's not just America. It's all over the world. There's a new Antichrist. Except they don't call him the Antichrist, do they? That would sort of spoil it, wouldn't it? That would sort of give him away, wouldn't it? No. In fact, they're not even against the Antichrist. The people on the news networks, they are supporters of the Antichrist. Now think about that. Wait, did you think that they were going to be on your side? The news reporters, the people on TV, you thought they were going to be, you thought they were looking out for the American people. Just, you know, like your favorite politician, whether it's Obama or George Bush, whoever your favorite politician is. You thought they were, oh, they're just looking out for the American people. They're just doing good, doing good works, looking out for the American people, looking out for our best interests, protecting us saving our lives, protecting our lives, giving us uh, freedom. They get our uh, freedom get, comes from our favorite politician. George Bush gives us freedom. Barack Obama, he gives us freedom. We're getting our freedom from politicians. We wouldn't be free without our politicians saving us and protecting us. Is that what you think? Well, that's what they're selling on TV though, isn't it? Our heroes are politicians. Right? In real life. And then in the fantasy world, our, our heroes are Superman and Batman. Right? Isn't that what's being portrayed on the television? Right? No? I'll tell you, those guys, they're not my heroes. They're not my high priest. If you think of president as another word for high priest sort of changes things doesn't it yeah Jesus is my president uh, Jesus is my high priest uh, no, it's not Barack Obama it's not George Bush as wonderful and kind-hearted as those gentlemen are uh, deep down they are as corrupt as it gets they're rich powerful and they are no good. Of course, you could say that about everybody, couldn't you? There's none righteous. No, not one. We're only righteous by the blood of Jesus. When we are born of God, he cleanses us. All right. And so, here in verse 18, it, it says, The woman, which is the great whore, which thou sawest, is that great city, Vatican City, which reigns 
over the kings of the earth. Well, if that's true, and it is true, the Bible does not lie. If you believe this is directly from God, and it is, then you ought to know that the Roman Catholic Church is that great city, Vatican City, and that they reign over Barack Obama, George Bush, or whoever is the king of whatever district or whatever country, whatever part of the world. All the kings of the earth, we call them kings, high priests, presidents, what, whatever you call them. There's one above them. You think about in the back of the dollar bill, there's a pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid is the all-seeing eye. And what do they call Vatican City? Holy See right and you think about um there's an old saying all roads lead to rome ah look fellas it's right there in front of our face the antichrist is here and the fourth beast the fourth kingdom it's here it's real and it's coming to an end it's not gonna be a future event it's happening right now 